You know your company. You know how you want it to grow. Liberate your employees from the constraints of distance and time. Simplify the movement of data. Execute bold strategies. You understand the possibilities when the limits of technology are lifted. The wait is over. TerraBeam is ready. This is your invitation to innovate. TerraBeam brings the simplicity of data communications to the telecommunications world. IT managers know their local area networks are very simple and very fast. What they hope for is that that same simplicity and that same speed could be brought to all of their networks, and that's what we intend to do. Take all the employees of a company, nationwide, worldwide, and have them work as effectively as if they all work in the same building. You just have one network. TerraBeam liberates companies from the confines of their four walls. It takes a company's local area network and extends it anywhere in the world. What we really will do is enable. Businesses can now communicate with their other locations, with their customers, and with their suppliers at speeds not possible today. We'll solve the, the, the last pressing problem, which is, the, which is the first mile. You know your vision. You know how your company should grow. TerraBeam is ready. Accept the invitation to innovate. Where there's a window, there's a way. That might as well be the slogan for our next guest. TerraBeam, a startup communications company, has created a new way to connect companies for high-speed broadband content, laser beams, and the office window. Joining me to talk about this is CEO of TerraBeam, Dan Hesse from Seattle. Dan, thanks for joining us. Good morning, Rhonda. This really is, you know, wild when you think about it. There's been so much buzz on Wall Street about fiber, optics being the future, and basically you're just going to beam a light through a window, and this is going to change everything. In layman's terms, if you could explain how you do this. Yeah, basically what we're doing is we're taking the two most important technologies in telecommunications today. Uh, optics, where you get very high speeds from optical transmissions, and the flexibility of wireless, and combining them on what's the number one problem in telecommunications today, which is the last mile. Fiber optics is terrific for sending very, very high speeds uh, data communication between cities. The problem is when it gets to the city, it hits literally a brick wall. Uh, fiber doesn't go through concrete, so think of us almost like the sprinkler head on the end of that pipe to ex extend that very high-speed optical signal right through windows. We send invisible, eye-safe light through the air, and we're able to carry gigabits of data speeds that are only possible via optical transmission. Well, you've, you've had some detractors in this idea, though. There are some people who just say, look, it's not going to work. And I know you've had to deal with those questions before. Make us feel confident that what you have is a winning strategy. I understand the fiber optic situation and drilling through concrete and all that stuff. But people raise questions about weather, about items blocking the light's direction. That's something that keeps coming up with this technology. Well, every time you watch the Olympic Games and, and you see swimming, think of TerraBeam. Uh, seven countries are using our signal. Actually, we're, we're transmitting in both directions, from the International Broadcast Center in Sydney to the Aquatic Center, carrying the video feeds in both directions for swimming. So we're, we're beaming, if you will, the Olympic signals uh, for swimming uh, around the globe. So it definitely works. Dan, this is Ralph Akampora. Is there any limitation in distance? I'm sorry, would you say that again, please? Any limitation with distance? Can you just do uh, it in the city, or you can do it across the Atlantic? Or uh, Actually, it's a very good question. There is a distance limitation. Basically, we can do anything you can do speed-wise over a fiber optic cable through the air. But because glass is so pure, you can go for very, very long distances, thousands of kilometers. We may only be able to go a few kilometers. Uh, getting back to the earlier question with respect to, uh, with respect to weather uh, and, and other um, uh, things that could uh, block the signal, we think we've solved for just about everything, um, snow, rain. We do have uh, one limitation, and, and that is fog. So what we do is we uniquely design our network in each city based upon the exact weather patterns of that city. So, for example, in Seattle, where we are now, that's going to be our, be our very first network because it happens to be the foggiest city in the United States. So we'll have smaller cells in Seattle, so we'll go f for smaller distances to be able to guarantee reliability to our customers. 
But for example, when we go to Las Vegas or Phoenix, we'll be able to go over much longer distances. Dan, when you joined, you brought a lot of credibility since you were CEO of AT&T Wireless, and you do have a, a AT&T connection, we can say, with some partnership with Lucent. So I want to point that out as well when I ask you this next question. When does all this technology really come together? You're doing some sort of, I guess, pilot phase, as we could say now. When are we going to see this in action in places more than Seattle? Well, right now uh, in Seattle, we have a trial customer up. We're going to add some additional trial customers, and of course, we use it ourselves. But we're planning to launch the city of Seattle with full commercial uh, availability in the first quarter. Then, beginning in the second quarter, you'll begin to see us roll out additional cities. So, this should be in many American cities in 2001. Dan Hesse, we look forward to seeing those beams. Thanks so much for joining us. Now, as you might expect, down here in Sydney, there are a lot of electronic signals, a lot of video and audio and digitized stuff flying around through the air. Communication transmission is just key to the way the games are being uh, performed and broadcast. And there is a Seattle firm that is here facing its own kind of Olympic challenge and trying to offer some new solutions to old problems. This is the Olympic TDC, the Television Distribution Center, where the electronic signals from 400 cameras come in, then are fed back out to broadcast rights holders like NBC and then to you. Tucked away in one corner, a little box which is part of a Seattle company's big dreams for wireless high-speed data transmission. Up to eight different signals can be digitized here, then fed to a laser behind this window, three stories up in an air conditioning tower, then beamed line of sight through open air three quarters of a mile to the aquatic center where engineers can check the quality of the images going out to viewers. Here's a picture of the beam itself in the crosshairs as it's aimed at the pool. It could help simplify the tangle of cables now needed to produce something as big as an Olympic telecast. Paul Sajowski is the company's senior engineer. It's been tested, retested, and um, the Olympics are really the, uh, the ultimate um, venue to uh, test and illustrate the capabilities of this technology. Performance so far? Uh, we've been error free since the start. TerraBeam CEO Dan Hesse sees Sydney 2000 as a great opportunity to show the world this wireless high-speed, high-volume hookup with applications he hopes far beyond sports in the everyday business world. You have very high-speed data that you can transmit over long distances. The problem is getting it done economically over a very short distance once you get into a city. It's called the last mile or first mile problem. How to connect with the head end of a fiber optic system. For downtown Seattle businesses, it's virtually next door in the Westin Hotel. Solving it looks easy in this handout video TerraBeam gave us. The company is hoping future clients will find good reasons to buy the hardware and pay service fees for this laser beam link with the rest of the world. It could be video conferencing, high speed data, um, connecting locations, uh, of from those companies the together that networks. send data between yes. locations. Uh, I'm Alan Chopper. I will be back tonight after the Olympic telecast right here on King 5. More from Megan Kwan, more from Sydney later on tonight. Good night. When I started TerraBeam, what I was really trying to solve was developing a very inexpensive way to deploy big bandwidth through the local loop. The WANs, the fiber plans that exist, connecting cities that Quest and Level 3 and those organizations run have clearly multi-gigabit capability. But the transition from those into the corporate networks is uh, problematic. Office buildings today have what we call local area networks. They use Ethernet, which allows computers to speak with each other very quickly inside the same building. The problem is if those computers want to talk with another computer in another building, they slow down very quickly. Challenge resides in provisioning high-capacity local loop services at DS3 or higher speeds in a timely and cost-effective way. The real problem is in the last mile in getting high-speed connections uh, to the individual sites that need it. We see an issue every day that relates to lack of availability of uh, fiber optical based uh, local loop services, uh, as well as lack of provisioning and installation capabilities. I have horror stories literally from every local loop carrier in the country I can tell you about. What we've heard from customers is when they come up with a new idea, they want to implement it right away. The world operates at internet speeds, and today if a customer wants a high capacity connection, they need to wait 
three months, six months, nine months, maybe 12 months to get that connection. If we're lucky, we can provision in six weeks. Uh, typically, we're hearing, uh, we're hearing estimates of 12, 20 weeks to provision the level of circuits that we need. The first step was to take a look at the existing point-to-point uh, -point laser technology and find a way to turn it into a point-to-multipoint -point network. The TeraBeam network consists of a series of hub stations that are located throughout a city. The hub stations are connected by a series of point-to-point -point links that form the backbone connection of our network. From each of these hub stations, we broadcast point-to-multipoint -point to the individual end users. Uh, businesses can, can now communicate with their other locations, with their customers, and with their suppliers at speeds not possible today. When we first saw the technology, uh, we thought it had to be a trick because it simply was not possible to provide a gigabit of bandwidth across a number of applications simultaneously and drop no packets over a three hour period of time. In the future generations of our systems, we will be able to provide up to two and a half or even 10 gigabits per second to the end user. When I first saw the TerraBeam technology, I thought it was the most revolutionary thing I've ever seen uh, from an infrastructure standpoint. We saw that all we needed was a window to get it working. We saw that we needed very little time to get it going. Uh, this compared to waiting six or 12 weeks to provision a, uh, a wired circuit. We set the unit up on a pedestal mount, looking out of an office window, looking at one of our hub sites, it takes about an hour and a half to establish a system, get it properly aligned and in operation. Our experience in dealing with TeraBeam was uh, very successful. We met them in August, and our meeting was in October, and we went from a planning cycle of just a few short weeks to actually having a network that was delivering multi-gigabit connectivity into a hotel that went extremely smoothly. TeraBeam liberates companies from the confines of their four walls. It takes a company's local area network and extends it anywhere in the world. I think what TeraBeam does is change the entire way a corporation is going to look at the services it provides its employees. When you think about the ability to really have effective video conferencing and not the kludged type of applications we have today, I think that's very, very uh, profound. When the capability for this new bandwidth comes, especially when it comes the way TeraBeam proposes to deliver it, which is wireless, unlicensed, right through the window where you don't have to worry about roof rights or anything like that, where any end user can pick it up tomorrow and start using it, that's gonna just release a huge amount of innovative energy and we'll have new businesses, new industries, all kinds of new things that, that we probably can't even begin to imagine today. When you look at this, you see things that you've never been able to see before. Um, you have multiple live HDTV sessions going on, full-length motion picture uh, streaming across a city uh, to, to a movie theater. Uh, you have bit error correction rates that are virtually zero. Fundamentally, when we make an investment, we don't invest in the technology, we invest in the people behind the company. And the team at TeraBeam is extraordinary. What they've created in such a short period of time is, is remarkable. Considering how young this company is, considering how quickly they've been growing, I'm really amazed at the level of service they've been able to provide. They've been very professional. They've been able to hire the right people. They've been able to provide us with the answers and the solutions that we need. Based on the direction that TeraBeam is heading today, the need to have high capacity fiber at the doorstep of every business in America will be largely reduced, possibly even eliminated over time. What TeraBeam will allow companies to do is take all the employees of a company nationwide, worldwide, and have them work as effectively as if they all worked in the same building. It'll be like the internet all over again. It's a revelation. It's, it's... It's the fulfillment of the spectronic paradigm, moving up spectrum to get all sorts of better features and capabilities and to do things that you can't do in RF. And it uh, blows open the last mile bo bottleneck into shards of light.